Hello everybody, today we are looking at planar graphs and Euler's formula 8.3 for some of you following along with your Nelson textbook. So um, basically continuing on with our work with networks, um, looking at what a connected graph and bridge means. So a connected graph is basically a graph where every vertex, okay, so each of our corners um, can be reached from every other vertex in the graph. All right. So if we look at um, this top one over here, each of these vertices can be connected to another one by some sort of pathway. Okay. This one over here, however, is not a connected graph because it has an isolated vertex. It has a vertex on its own. Um, this over here is also not a connected graph because these vertices J and N are isolated from K, M and L. Okay, so there's no connection there as well. So that also means it's not connected. So to be connected, there has to be some sort of joining ability to move from each of the vertexes or vertices. We can also have what we call a bridge. So a bridge is basically an edge that's going to be able to keep our graph connected okay so that if the bridge is removed then this graph would no longer be connected so here we can see that between j and n and then k m and l we've got a bridge between this n and m so if we were to remove this bridge um, that would mean that this graph is no longer connected all right the same way if we had say it like this where J was isolated, J and N could be the bridge that's connecting N, M, K and L together as well. Okay, so a bridge basically keeps it connected. Um, it's also possible to have more than one bridge in a graph or in a network. Let's go through some example questions. So for each um, of the graphs that we might show you, you might have to determine the smallest number of edges that may be needed to make it a connected graph. Okay, so to be connected, remember each point has to join um, somehow. So the way that I would do it is I would say, okay, um, which vertex means that I'll have a path to every other vertex. So this one has three isolated vertices. It has this one, this one, and this one. So in order to turn it into a connected graph, I must make sure that that isolated graph or vertex point has a joining point. Now we have a connected graph. Okay, so that would basically be the answer to part A. Um, you could also connect it in terms of going like this, for example, as well. So there's multiple different possibilities. Um, you could go like this and you could also connect it like this as well. Part B, how many bridges are there? All right, so in terms of counting bridges, it's basically an edge that if we remove it would result in a graph that's no longer connected. Okay, so if we remove, say, this point here, that means E would be isolated, so CE would be a bridge. Um, if we look at BC, okay, if we were to remove BC, that means C and E would be isolated, which means B and C is also a bridge. Okay, so in total over here, there would be two bridges. All right, the next section is looking at something called a planar graph. So a planar graph is basically a connected graph, which can be drawn without any edges crossing over. This is the important part here. So a graph can have edges crossing. So if we look at diagram A, they, um, is crossing over okay between these two lines here these two edges but what I can do is I can draw this line that's CB I can draw it outside okay like how it is in diagram B it's still showing the exact same information but it is now planar okay so planar means there's no edges that are going to cross over so the way that you can sort of justify that as a little exam hack there to help you Imagine the edges as pieces of a string that have been tied to nails on a board. So if two or more pieces of string are crossed, then we need to think about how we can move that piece of string so then they're no longer crossed. We can kind of move it around the um, vertices instead. 
This is going to be really important when it comes to what we call Euler's formula. So Euler's formula, there was basically a mathematician named Leonard Euler um, who solved that um, bridge problem that we looked at a couple of lessons ago. So he basically came up with a formula that could be used to determine whether or not a graph is going to be planar. Okay, so Euler's formula, it is a formula. It basically says that the number of vertices, V, plus the number of faces, F minus the number of edges is going to be equal to 2. Okay, so if we look at um, this cube that's been drawn, um, we can draw that as a, as a graph. Okay, so that's basically showing which vertex is meeting um, which other vertex. So if we look at A, A joins to E and A joins to B and A joins to D. So here. A joins to B, A joins to E, and A joins to D. So this is showing that information. So from the redrawn version, it makes it a lot easier to identify the number of faces, okay? So the number of faces here um, is going to be um, six, okay? Um, we've got a cube, so we know that it's got six faces. Um, the number of edges as drawn, is going to be 12. So I've just highlighted three already. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And the number of vertices is of course eight. Okay, we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So if we test that, the number of vertices plus the number of faces take away the number of edges. So eight plus six take away 12 does in fact equal two. So because that is equal, we can say that our graph is planar, okay? So this formula is going to be crucial for you guys. All right, let's have a look at how this can also be transposed. So transposed is just using algebra to swap um, like the order if you want to find the number of vertices, if you've been given the edges and the faces, or if you want to find the number of faces and you've been given edges and vertices, or if you want to find the edges and you've been given the vertices and the faces, you can substitute into the formula to figure out the missing piece. All right, let's have a look at worked example number five over here. So basically, we have to show that the following graph is planar. So we want to do that firstly by redrawing the graph so that no edges intersect. So the way that I do it is I look at the points that are actually intersecting. Okay, so the big one here that's intersecting is this Q to S. So I'm going to draw this P, um, T and R. And I'm going to draw that main section of the, sh of the graph that we've got there. Okay, and then we've got an S coming off of it and we've got a Q coming off of this way. So now I've got to figure out how can I draw this Q to S line so that it doesn't intersect my graph, okay? And what I can do, well, this drawing's a little bit off, sorry, in terms of how everything is positioned with the R. The R needs to be a little bit further out, um, which would make it look more like that on a bigger scale. <laughs> um, so basically my third line so that this Q to S doesn't intersect would just be to go around. And we have now drawn our graph so that no edges intersect. Okay, there's other ways that you could draw it. You could have even gone around this way if you wanted to. Um, both would give the same result. Okay, we can also show that it's planar using Euler's formula. So basically, we need to figure out how many faces, edges, and vertices there are. So if we look at the number of vertices, okay, we've got one, two, three, four and five vertices. If we look at the number of faces on our graph, okay, we've got this face here, we've got this face here, and remember the external is one face as well. So we've got three faces and the number of edges that we've got, I'm gonna highlight it in a different color. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and then that rounded one that we drew as our sixth edge. Okay, so I can say six, and we're going to prove that this fits into Euler's formula. So if Euler's formula is V plus F take E equals two, let's see if doing that to these numbers gives us the answer of two. So V is five plus F, which is three, take away E, which is six, 
5 plus 3 is 8. 8 take away 6 is in fact 2, which means, yes, I have shown that this graph is planar. Okay, and that's exactly how you would do that question. Moving on to question 6. All right, we have been given an adjacency matrix, which we looked at last lesson. So if you were a bit confused, you can go look at the previous video. Um, it represents a planar graph with four vertices. So we know we've got A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D as our vertices. We need to determine the number of faces using this information. So based on this, we know that the number of vertices is four. Okay. Now we need to look at identifying the edges. So the number of edges I've basically got here, AB as an edge, I've got AC as an edge, I've got AD as an edge, okay, I've got again written here AB but that's going to be the same as um, BA, I've got BC, okay, I don't have that written anywhere so I can add that in, I've got AC which we've got here already. We've got BC, which we've just written down because remember they're going backwards as well. Um, and I've got CD, which I haven't written down. So I'm going to write that one down. We've got AD, I've already written that down. And I've got CD, which I've just written down. So we've got one, two, three, four, five edges. So five edges. And we are trying to determine the number of faces. So basically, I'm going to scroll up here, okay, instead of transposing the equation myself, I'm going to look at the transposed version that I've been told. So F equals E take V plus 2. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say, all right, F equals E take V plus 2. So the number of faces is going to be the edges, which is 5, take away vertices, which is 4, and then plus 2. 5 take away 4 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, which means this planar graph is going to have three faces. Alternatively, I could sketch it, but we can just sub it into the formula and it'll give us our answer anyway. All right, final question. A connected planar graph of 12 edges divides into the plane of five distinct regions. We need to determine the number of vertices. So again, if we're trying to find the number of vertices, I'm going to look at my formula for finding vertices. V equals E take away F plus 2. So that's exactly what I'm going to write down. I'm going to write down V equals E take away F plus 2. I've been told that I've got 12 edges. Okay, so that would be my E value, take away my distinct regions. So that's telling me my number of faces. So take away five plus two, 12 take away five is seven, seven plus two is nine, which means this planar graph must have nine vertices. All right, so this is basically applying Euler's formula to our planar graphs. Our planar graphs, remember are those connected graphs with no over, um, crossing over regions. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you later. Bye.